gentleman's time has expired. Uh, uh, Mr. Gosar, the representative from Arizona. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In November of 2015, 19 other bicameral members of Congress and I sent a letter raising significant concerns about the management strategies for wild horse and burrow populations. The letter specifically referenced burrow populations in my home state of Arizona that have soared to more than nine times the appropriate management level, or AML. Mr. Norris testified that the wild horse and burrow populations currently exceed the AML by 250%. This is unacceptable. Further, wild burrows are creating significant threats to public safety in my home state of Arizona. For example, in a three-year period in Bullhead City, there were 32 accidents involving burrows and vehicles. In the Phoenix area during the same time frame, there had been 121 burrow accidents and the BLM documented 55 burrows were killed on roadways. Burrows are also negatively impacting other wildlife and natural resources. Ms. Catherines, you testified that, quote, there are reasonable, cost-effective, and humane ways to maintain healthy populations of wild horses and burrows. Yet your organization opposes management strategies that accomplish these stated goals. Mis misguided efforts by organizations like yours to maintain excessive and unhealthy levels of burrow and horse populations actually destroy rangelands and lead to animal starvation. If you all really care about these animals, you should allow them to be managed in a responsible manner, not overpopulate and starve. So, Ms. Catherines, very shortly, very quickly, how much money has the Cloud Foundation contributed to responsibly managing or controlling wild horse and burrow population? How much money? Well, we volunteered for BLM. I'm asking you specifically. My question is, how much money? I don't know. I, will you get that for the record? Pardon me? I would like to ask you to research that and bring that back to the record. Yes, Thank certainly. You. How many wild horses and burrows has the Cloud Foundation actually adopted? Uh, probably 40. We would we'd actually like actual numbers okay, All right. for the record. So well, I expect those answers going to All come right. back. Certainly. Mr. Norris, Keith, it's actually good to see you, um, and thanks for testifying today. Are you aware that Congress has contributed to the mismanagement of wild horse and burrow populations by explicitly prohibiting public land management agencies through an unnecessary appropriation rider from complying with the law and managing wild horse and burrow populations in the most humane and cost-effective manner possible? Uh, thank you, Congressman. I do believe that the uh, congressional that the appropriations writer has contributed in some ways to limiting the options that the BLM has to deal with their off-range population of horses. In your opinion, should the writer be removed and would this removal help BLM and other agencies manage these populations that comply with the law? I think the removal of the writer is certainly an option that Congress should consider that would allow them to address uh, the off-range population and it would relieve them of their obligations to care for that off-range population uh, which would allow them to uh, manage the on-range herds much more uh, appropriately. Now, I thought it was interesting because I think that occurred in 2011 or 2012, if I'm not mistaken, and it never was traced back to a single office that offered that amendment, if I'm not mistaken. You testified that hard-working taxpayers are spending $50 million annually on horses and burrows and holding facilities and that these costs are continuing to rise. You had eight bullet points in your executive summary that would result in better management of these populations on range and off range. Can you quickly reiterate those strategies and how they would benefit taxpayers and allow for better management of those populations, please? Absolutely, Congressman. So, uh, as you noted, I, I list out several uh, potential management actions uh, that the BLM could consider and that Congress could consider directing the BLM. Some of those are currently limited through things like the appropriations writer, uh, but I do believe they are all potential options. Uh, the main concern being on the off-range population, uh, there are four options there, including increasing adoptions, whether that be through incentives or other methods, uh, or the transfers that, that Mr. Ellis mentioned, uh, authorizing euthanasia of horses, permitting unrestricted sale, uh, or increasing budget for holding, essentially relieving or providing more resources uh, for the BLM uh, so they can deal with that off-range population so they can actually manage the on-range herd. On the on-range side, we uh, must uh, increase gathers and removals, uh, increase the use of fertility control, apply sterilization techniques, and create non-reproducing herds. Those are four different options uh, that will contribute to uh, helping to maintain AML. Um, I believe the increasing gathers and removals is the only option for actually achieving AML in the near future, uh, after which those other three options I think are viable for maintaining uh, the appropriate management level AML. So would you consider that we're in a ma emergency management levels at this point in time? I think, Congressman, we certainly are, are very close to that, if not there already, um, particularly in, in some areas of the particularly arid regions of, of Nevada where there are um, uh,
considerable number of horses, and I think that on the trajectory we are at, uh, you know, with 67,000 horses on the range, we're looking to be uh, above 110,000 within the next four years, uh, and, and it just goes on and on from there. So uh, changes in management are certainly going to be required. I thank the gentleman and yield back. Gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Westerman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the witnesses.